comment on too, that the heat spots mm -hmm. may be where the actual activity is occurring at that time. And when we were doing our investigation this weekend, I was filming um, an area and it was so crazy because there was something else very active happening behind me. It was familial com communication behind me. And then somebody was using a fleur seek, looking in mirrors and picture frames and such. There was, it wasn't cold spots, it, they were hot spots. And mm -hmm. I'm sitting there filming that saying, this is not, this is not paranormal activity. This has to be where someone touched, you know, these glass frames or these walls or something and one of them raised its hand and waved at us and I caught mm -hmm. that on my camera and it's in my live feed on Facebook but the live feed was so glitchy because of all this stuff that was happening around me it's just insane people thought that it had stopped and it, it paused a lot through that video and I have not gone back to review it yet but what do you think? I know that you think that when you find a cold spot, the spirit has already come and gone. What do you think about these right. hot spots? Because in those mirrors were were red and yellow. They're, they weren't blue. And I looked over my shoulder at the people behind me. They were not doing anything that would indicate that it was somebody playing a prank. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that that a lot of it, you know, I, I believe that usually the heat dissipation is, uh, okay, you know, uh, when, when you get down to, to the laws of thermodynamics, um, at, at, the, at the very basic level, when energy is, is used, it creates one of two types of reactions, either an endothermic reaction or an exothermic reaction meaning either the process causes the molecules to lose heat or to produce heat. Typically, um, when, um, when you have a, something that's based more on molecular friction, you have heat being produced, more of your intense, um, types of energy transfers and um i believe that when when that heat is burned up as in an exothermic reaction I, I think what happens is some type of manifestation or something some interaction takes place it burn it actually uses the heat as the fuel and cools down quickly right afterward and that's where a cold spot comes from the hot spots it's a little bit more tricky that's something that i i'm a lot, i'm fascinated by you know cuz hot the the hot spots are a lot more rare but we do see them and i think that what it is is I think that you're going to find more of an intelligent reaction related to those hot spots, whereas the cool spots is probably going to tend to be more of like a place memory or more residual. Now, I'm not saying that's absolute by any means, but I think that most of the time, just from what we've seen and observed, um, uh, that seems to be that something about your intelligent entities tend to produce heat instead of dissipating it. That's interesting. Um, which, which what that kind of tells you is based on that observation that tells you that a, um, an apparition that you see or hear that is residual is composed of a different type of energy or fueled by a different type of energy than something that is intelligent. But think of this, what, what else produces heat? Electricity, right. the, the, the flow of electricity. Um, 
specifically the electrons moving through a conductor cause friction on the conductor itself produces heat even if it's not detectable by touch you can measure the temperature difference uh, and you can't but wonder is that them trying is that an intelligent entity trying to manifest trying to move something trying to create some some type of psychokinetic reaction that and that conducting of that energy producing that heat that's you know definitely there are, there are so many more questions and answers there but i think that that's the direction that that we're going to end up going with it i do too and it feels right if that makes sense i just find mm -hmm. the, in the instance of the old Paulding jail that would mm -hmm. be intelligent activity based on my experiences there because they interact they're aware of the situations mm -hmm. around them and they mm -hmm. communicate so i am convinced that there is active intelligent activity happening there mm -hmm. i just find it fascinating when this stuff just shows up and like like friday night when there's everything happening and then you have you know stuff happening behind us but there's also people in glass who look like heat you know they look like living people because they're heat waving at you it was the darnest mm -hmm. thing i've ever seen it really blew my mind but i know what i know what i've experienced at at balding jail so mm -hmm. And I can't wait for you to experience that. We're going to take and our that place. Go ahead. What? And that oh, place. I was just going to say it's it's on my bucket list for sure. Uh, I've always heard good things about it. Well, you're going to love it. But we're going to take a two minute break right quick. And that way we'll wrap up this business and we will get everything grooving. Listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experienced Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome back to Fate Magazine Radio. I am Kat Hobson, your host. I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Frank Lee, who is my very favorite person to explain scientific theories to me that I might be struggling with a little bit. I share some things with him too, so it's a good balance. Welcome back, Frank. Are you ready for this last few minutes? Because, oh my gosh, we're not even close uh, to filling out the the whole list of things we had to talk about. Uh, oh wow, that just a few minutes? Uh, we haven't even got started. I know, right? 
And that's even okay. with all of the the little hiccups here and there. Right. So so what we're going to need everybody to do is, you know, here in a few minutes, um, we'll just go to break instead of ending the show. Um, we'll take like a five minute break, go get some coffee, everything, and we'll, we'll just do a marathon show. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go till, I don't know, what, five, six in the morning? That we have good? done that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Not live on the air, but we have done that. We have done, uh, did we do a four hour show one night? I know we did a three hour show. Did I we think actually so. make yes, four we hours did. one night? Yeah. I we, so. we did. We did. That was just a few months ago. It was. And it was astounding. <laughs> and a lot of fun. For, yes, yes. We... <laughs> for those that don't that... know us, um, we tend to share a lot of theories and debate a lot of, of theory as well. And mm -hmm. I'm, I am a researcher. And I'm very dedicated with my research. However, I tend to come at things from the spiritual side and get confirmation of what I experience, hopefully, by using science and technology. Because I feel like I can't present what I get from an investigation without having backup. Because it's just wrong. I can't tell someone, well, I feel like your Aunt Jane, you do have one, right? Is living in this house with you, blah, 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 blah. And I need something else that's going to be substantial for them. And you work from the science side of going with Aunt Jane. <clears throat> not necessarily being there, but trying to ascertain if there actually is something happening. And then you might decide right. it's Aunt Jane. Right, right. As long as it's truly Aunt Jane and not the fish tank. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, I think that's going to be awesome. Yes, yes. That um, you I know, I think the fish tank is hilarious. To be quite honest. Yes, yes. You know, and the sad thing is, there are three paranormal teams before we went out there that had went out there and. And none of them just thought to check, hey, what well, what about the resonant frequencies and sounds that are here? How many Have people we do you know that carry that equipment with them? In honesty. You know, uh, it's very few. Uh, right. And it's, it's even more disheartening when, when I say, uh, when, when I mention something about infrasound, how many paranormal investigators that have been doing it for a long time go, what is that? It's just, it you know, blows my mind too. You know, the, th the thing that it's like we were talking about before the, the results of your investigation are always going to be directly correlated to your comprehension of the world around you, how things work so that you can recognize when something is outside the ordinary or when something's just a little strange and we um you know we we have to do that as if you know and, and i think that is a huge hold up that we see in the paranormal field you know is when people try to mimic what they see on tv when when they try to go about things from that angle or you know they're they go to the to the side of superstition or mythology and and don't really try to put a logical approach to it you know if a tv crew comes out there who are they going to point a camera at the guy that's over there working on the math problem or the clown in the corner juggling chainsaws i mean you know i find it to be right? the chainsaws right right that you know if it involves any kind of TV, media, publishing, or whatever, they, they're they going for entertainment value. and um, Or a way to mock the science because they don't want mm -hmm. to admit that there is a scientific method to test these theories. Absolutely. And, and they, um, you, you know, as a paranormal investigator, 
you know, you need to immerse yourself in learning about 